the sages. So we are the sages. Tapa, Austerity. Austerity. Takshad. Takshad. Directly. Manye. I think. Pra. Arya. Arya. Personified. <laughs> Translation. Bali Maharaj then said to Lord Ramana Dev, O oh Brahmana, I offer you my hearty welcome and my respectful obeisances. Please let us know what we may do for you. We think of you as the personified austerity of the great Brahman sages. The next verse. <clears throat> oh my Lord, because you have kindly arrived at our home, all my forefathers were satisfied. Our family and entire dynasty have been sanctified. And the sacrifice we are performing is now complete because of your presence. O oh, son of a Brahmana, today the fire of sacrifice is ablaze. According to the injunction of the Shastra, and I have been freed from all the sinful reactions of my life by the water that has washed your lotus feet. O oh my Lord, by the touch of your small feet, the entire surface of the world has been sanctified. O oh son of a Brahmana, it appears that you have come here to ask me for something. Therefore, whatever you want, you may take from me. O oh, best of those who are worshipable, you may take from me a cow, gold, a furnished house, palatable food and drink, the daughter of a Brahmana for your wife, prosperous villages, horses, elephants, chariots, or whatever you desire. <clears throat> That's the end of the chapter. So then Prabhupada <clears throat> speaks about what's happening in the introduction to the next chapter. So I'm just going to read that and make hopefully some relevant comments. <clears throat> so this is the beginning of chapter 19, which is called Lord Vamana Begs Charity from Bali Maharaj. So Bali has just offered Vamana Dave whatever he wants. Whatever you want, he says. So, now, what will happen? This 19th chapter describes how Lord Vamadadev asked for three paces of land in charity. How Bali Maharaj agreed to his proposal and how Shukracharya forbade Bali Maharaj to fulfill Lord Vamadadev's request. When Bali Maharaj, thinking Vamadadev to be the son of a Brahmana, told him to ask for anything he liked, Lord Vamanadev praised Hirani Kashipu and Hirani Aksha for their heroic activities. And after thus praising the family in which Bali Maharaj had been born, he begged the king for three paces of land. Bali Maharaj agreed to give this land in charity since this was, a, was very insignificant. But Shukracharya, who could understand that Vamanadev was Vishnu, the friend of the demigods, forbade Bali Maharaj to give this land. Shukracharya advised Bali Maharaj to withdraw his promise. He explained that in subduing others, in joking, in responding to danger, in acting for the welfare of others, and so on, one could refuse to fulfill one's promise and there would be no fault. By this philosophy, Shukracharya tried to dissuade Bali Maharaj from giving land to Vamanadev. <laughs> so we've had a whole uh, series of chapters uh, building up to this uh, surrender of Bali Maharaj to uh, Vamana Dev. So it started with Aditi and the uh, demigods and the demons having a fight 
so that the demons were uh, driven out of the heavenly planets. The demigods were driven out and the demons took over. And then <clears throat> Haditi was disturbed and so she did austerities, and did the pie of Rata, and then Vamana appeared as her son. And now Bali is performing a sacrifice and Vamana has uh, appeared in the sacrifice. And Bali is responding now to this beautiful young Brahmana boy. Mm. <coughs> so who's Bali? Who's this Bali Maharaj? It's a very unusual personality. You know, it's quite hard to think who to understand, if you like, or to, to comprehend it. He's, he's a very, very powerful king of the demons, so powerful that he was able to conquer the heavenly planets. He's, an, he's a disciple of Shukracharya, who's like the spiritual master of the demons, very powerful also. And then Bali Maharaj is simultaneously a Mahajan. He's a Mahajan. He's one of the 12 great souls who are um, who know what religious principles are. Because it's not an exhaustive list, but it's a very important list. It's given by Yamaraj. So anyway, <clears throat> Bali Maharaj... Uh, He's the grandson of Prahlad. And Prahlad Maharaj is his grandfather. So Prahlad had four sons. When we hear about Prahlad, we generally hear about Prahlad as a child. And how his father was trying to kill him and how he was sitting on the lap of Lord Nishringadev. And <clears throat> but uh, he, he continued on uh, after that Leela, and he became the king. His father was dead, killed by Rani Kashipu. And he had a son. Um, the eldest of his sons was Virochan. And then Virochan was the father of Bali. So because, well, my understanding is that because Bali was born in the, in the family of the demons, he was acting as a demon. Um, he was you know, militaristic and he was a leader and he was fighting with the demigods because that's what demons do. But because his father had been, pro, a grandfather had been Prahlad Maharaj, he was a super Mahabhagavat devotee, he must have had interaction with Prahlad, he must have heard from Prahlad, he must have had association with his grandfather. And so he heard, must have heard about devotional service. He must have, he must have become a devotee. So he was, you could say, it was a little bit similar to Prahlad's situation, where Prahlad was there in the midst of the family in this great dynasty of demons, and he became a devotee. And so similarly, Bali Maharaj is uh, there uh, in the family of demons. But he's a devotee, he's actually a devotee of Krishna internally. So then Krishna, as a in a Lord Vishnu or Vamanadeva appears, and he must know Bali's heart, yeah. So but then Bali praises him and offers him whatever he likes. So there's a very <clears throat> seems like uh Not exactly how you would expect a demon to respond to the appearance of the Lord. And when Shukracharya <coughs> sees uh, Vamana Dev, he knows it's Vishnu, but he doesn't have a positive response. He says, Oh, don't give him anything. Forget it. Don't give him any charity. This is Vishnu. So Shukracharya knew it was Vishnu. He knew it was the Supreme Lord, but he had an inimical response. He didn't want to. Uh, to give charity. Of course, his motivation is uh, that he was being maintained by Bali Maharaj. He was maintaining his spiritual master. 
course, in great comfort and great style because he was the king of the whole universe. And uh, Shukri Acharya was thinking, well, if he gives charity to uh, Vishnu, Vishnu will take everything. And where will I be? You know, where, what is my pension plan now? You know? So he said, don't give anything. Don't give anything to this, this Vamana Dev. <laughs> to be a guru. Huh? He's not a qualified guru. If, if, he, if you have a guru who tells you not to serve Vishnu, not to surrender to Vishnu, uh, he's not a qualified, not a qualified guru. And there's one verse that's spoken by, by Lord Rishabhadev. Let's try and find it. Does anybody know the verse? This begins, Guru Nashishat, Peter Nashishat. I can't, I, my, somehow my Kindle is gone. It's gone a bit strange here. Do you know the whole verse? Go on. Something, something. It's one of these, it's all these words are very similar and it's quite hard to learn, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, the purpose of the verse is that if you you have an unqualified guru, if you dis- you can reject him. You can reject him. If you have an unqualified parent, you can reject him. If you have an unqualified husband, even you can reject him. And if the demigods are unqualified, you can reject. <clears throat> you may not reject them, completely reject, but you reject their authority. You, you don't hear. You don't hear their instruction. You, you find somebody else who's qualified to instruct you. And similarly, one should not become a husband or should not become uh, a worshipable superior. One should not become a parent unless one is qualified. And what is this qualification? The qualification is that you have to be able to do, deliver your your ward, your your child, or your disciple, your dependent. You have to be able to deliver them from birth and death, which is quite a high qualification. One should not become a parent unless you can deliver your children from birth and death. That's effectively what Lord Rishabharadeva is saying. And you should not become a guru if you're unable to deliver your disciples. Because there's so many gurus now, so many parents as well, but they're not qualified. But the disciples also are not qualified. There's a, a relationship between the disciple and the guru. The guru should be qualified, but also the disciple should be qualified. The disciple should also know what are the qualifications of a guru. You know, they should not just accept anybody sentimentally. They should know what to expect. Uh, the guru should be giving you spiritual instruction. <clears throat> so <laughs> this is the point where uh, Bali Maharaj is put in a bind. He's put in a in a in a in an island. We have an expression. He's put between a, a rock and a hard place. It means that he he's got to decide now whether he will give the the charity to Ramana Dev as he's promised to do or whether he will reject his spiritual master, Shukracharya. So whichever he does, it's going to be, a, has, uh, it's going to be full of implications <clears throat> for him and all his um, associates. You know, if, he, if he rejects his spiritual master in such a public place, he disobeys him. He's very serious. <coughs> But then if he breaks his promise in the middle of this sacrifice where he's just announced that he will give this brahmana whatever he wants, and he says, no, I've changed my mind. No. <clears throat> Either way. So we know, we probably most of us know the storyline, and he decides to surrender to, uh, to Vamana Dave and to go against his, his spiritual master. And so... He, 
you can see that Bali Maharaj must be very strong-minded, must be very, very clear, must be very determined and brave and courageous and, and Krishna conscious. Yeah? Because basically he's, he's giving away everything. You know, it's not like you know, a few euros or you know, a little bit of false prestige. He's giving away the whole universe. Yeah? He's giving away the whole, the whole of his uh, standing as, a, as the king of the universe, as the king of all the demons, as, as a disciple of this prestigious demon guru. And, uh, <clears throat> and he's surrendering to Vishnu. So, anyway, he takes the right path, and that's why I suppose that's why he's in the Bhagavatam. And he surrenders, and he tells Vamanida, uh, uh, yes, yes, you can have the land. You can take, take. And because, because he's a dwarf, you know, he's a little boy, Vamanida is small. When you see the paintings, which Prabhupada must have approved, but He's like, you know, like maybe eight, ten years old kind of size, you know, like small child size. So if he makes three steps, it wouldn't be very big steps. It wouldn't be very... So he's thinking, well, I'll give charity to this boy. But because he's Vishnu and his spiritual master's... uh, warned him. Maybe he's thinking something else may happen. But anyway, he just agrees. Yes, take three steps of land. And then we know that uh, Bali Maharaj (coughs) then sees the real power of Lord Vishnu uh, displayed right in front of him, which would also be an amazing thing. You suddenly see somebody uh, spread their legs right up to the end. (coughs) to the end of the whole uh, universe. He must have become very big as well, you know. Must have been expanded his size to do that. So. Just want to read this verse that Gives a list of the twelve Mahajans. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu. Shambhu means Shiva. Kumara. Kumara. Kapilo Manu. Pralada Janako Bhishmo. Balia Vyasakir Vayam. So the twelve Mahajans are Swayambhu, that's Swayambhu Manu. Narada Muni. Lord Shiva, Sanat Kumar, Kapila, Lord Kapila, uh, oh sorry, Swayambhu is Lord Brahma, excuse me, and then Manu means uh, Swayambhu for Manu, and then Prahlad, so Prahlad is also one of the 12 Mahajans. We've got Bali and Prahlad, two family members, uh, both as Mahajans, and Vyasakir, which is um, Shukadev, and then Vayam, that means uh, Yamaraj. So those are the, the 12 Mahajans. Okay, so to go back to this verse, <coughs> speaking about the, the qualifications of the guru. Srila Prabhupada in the purport, he talks about this pastime um, of Bali Maharaj rejecting his, uh, his guru. So it says, we have many instances in history illustrating Rish illustrating Rishabhadeva's instructions. Sukracharya was rejected by Bali Maharaj 
due to his inability to save Bali Maharaj from the path of repeated birth and death. Shukracharya was not a pure devotee. He was more or less inclined to fruitive activity and he objected when Bali Maharaj promised to give everything to Lord Vishnu. Actually, one is supposed to give everything to Lord Vishnu because everything belongs to the Lord. Consequently, the Lord advises in Bhagavad Gita 927, 927, 927. Yad Karoshi, Yad Ashnasi, Jai. The translation is, O son of Kunti, all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities that you may perform, should be done as an offering unto me. This is Bhakti, Prabhupada says. Mm-hmm. You do everything for Krishna. Unless one is devoted, he cannot give everything to the Supreme Lord. Unless one can do so, he cannot become a spiritual master, husband, father or mother. Similarly, the wives of the brahmanas. So this is an example of, the, of some ladies who rejected their husbands for a higher purpose. Similarly, the wives of the Brahmins who were performing sacrifices gave up their relatives just to sacrifice, satisfy Krishna. This is an example of a wife rejecting a husband who cannot deliver her from the impending dangers of birth and death. Mm. Similarly, Prahlad Maharaj rejected his father Prahlad's father, Hirani Kashipu, was always trying to get him instructed how to be a better demon, how to stop being a devotee. Prahlad re- rejected those instructions and always remembered the instructions of Narada Muni. And Bharat Maharaj rejected his mother. Oh, does that mean Bharat Maharaj who rejected his dear mother? Sorry? Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. Barrett rejected his mother who got who who made political maneuvers to get Ram banished to the forest so that her son Barrett could be the king. Of course it backfired because Barrett didn't want to uh, go along with her plan at all. Actually, he was very angry that his mother had behaved like that, embarrassed. The word divim indicates a demigod or one who, can ex- who accepts worship from a dependent. Ordinarily, the spiritual master, husband, father, mother, or superior relative accepts worship from an inferior relative. But here is Shabadev forbids this. First, the father, spiritual master, or husband must be able to release the dependent from repeated birth and death. If he cannot do this, he plunges himself into the ocean of reproachment for his unlawful activities. Everyone should be very responsible and take charge of his dependence, just as a spiritual master takes charge of his disciple or a father takes charge of his son. All these responsibilities cannot be discharged honestly unless one can save the dependent from a per- repeated birth and death. Because in order to save somebody else, we have to save ourselves. Yeah. It means we have to be qualified as a devotee to be a real uh, human being. Okay, 8.25. This is finished quickly, but just wanted to say uh, a little bit more about Bali Maharaj. He, he is given as the example of uh, the devotional this process of devotional service called Atmanivedanam. So there are nine processes of devotional service, which are Jai. Very good. 
So there's an exemplar, an exemplar of each one. So Shravanam was Chai. People have been doing their Bhakti Shastri. <coughs> Kirtanam. Chai. Smaranam. Pralad, yeah. Pralad. Vandanam. Praying. Vandanam means praying. Akrura. Akrura, yeah. Archanam. Prithu, yeah. Prithu Maharaj. Funny, isn't it? We have a lot about Prithu Maharaj in the Bhagavatam, but we don't have anything about him being a Pujari. It's all about him dealing with the earth and yeah, meeting the Kumaras and anyway. <clears throat> Padasavanam. Yeah, she massages his the Lord's lotus feet. But Padasavanam also means visiting the holy places. Yeah, in India, we go to the temples of Padasavanam. And then the last, no, wait a minute, Dasyam. Hanuman, yeah. Hanuman is the famous, most famous for being a, a great devotee. The first class devotee. Yeah. The first class servant. He doesn't just do what the master asks, but he does more. Like Lord Ram asked Hanuman, uh, or he asked all the monkeys, if they could find Sita. So Hanuman's, Hanuman was the one that succeeded, and he actually found Sita. There were millions of monkeys, but the one who found Sita was Hanuman. But he not only found Sita, but he, he set fire to the whole of Lanka as well, which is also very pleasing to... Lord Ramana, uh, Ramachandra. Because the, um, the Rakshashas, they captured Hanuman, spying, looking all around Lanka. After he'd found Sita, he had a good look around. And they caught him. And they, to punish him, they set fire to his tail. So he had a long, nice long tail. And because they did that, he, then he jumped all around Lanka and set fire to the whole place and then then left, went back to tell Lord Ram where, where Sita was. Anyway, <clears throat> so anyway, the last two, the last two, that's seven, the last two processes are Sakyam becoming a friend. Oh. Very good. <laughs> and Atmanavedanam, which is Bali Maharaj. But these two are on the liberated platform. The others, we can do all the other ones. But Sakyam actually becoming Krishna's friend. And Krishna's everybody's friend, to say. But to actually have this really intimate uh, Sakya Ras with Krishna, the liberated platform. And also Atmanu Vedanam is that's full surrender, surrendering everything. Atmanu Vedanam is, is Bali Maharaj. So you can see how, a sp how what a special personality this Bali Maharaj is. Uh, he was so uh, completely, totally devoted, surrendered to Krishna, playing the role of a demon. So there was also um, there's another devotee like that too, Fritra, is it? Pritrasura, the one who had to fight with Indra. Pritrasura, yeah. He was also apparently a demon. He fought with Indra, but he became glorified as a devotee. It became apparent that he was actually a much greater devotee than Indra. So, <coughs> Bali's like that, apparently a demon. But actually, in, inside his heart, he's a, a devotee. And Krishna's arranged his pastime to manifest these qualities of uh, Vamanadev, of, of, of Bali Maharaj. His, <coughs> sometimes they, you can see this in the pastimes, how they manifest the wonderful qualities of the, of the devotees of Krishna.
so maybe there has, somebody has some comment or question or it's 8.30 already but I've, he had his hand up so you want to know the qualification of the husband or wife or guru does it mean they need to be on the same path for on spiritual development to become A mother. Let, 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 let the mother be maybe less qualified than a guru to have a child. Yeah. But I can't have a child. I have to be a pure devotee before I can have a child. You mean something yeah. that you're thinking like, like that? Yeah. Of course, that is. We should be liberated to, to liberate others. Yeah, we have to be able to, we have to at least know how. There's two things, isn't there? There's one having the knowledge, having spiritual knowledge, and there's one. The other thing is having to realize the spiritual knowledge. So at least you must give the instruction. You must at least be able to direct your child <coughs> or your wife to a, a source of spiritual knowledge. And then not to be hypocritical, you have to be following it yourself. So for us, the, what would be relevant for us would be Prabhupada's teachings, wouldn't it? To be following Prabhupada's teachings and to set an example to your wife or to your child of following the teachings of Srila Prabhupada. Mm. Put it simply like that. My daughter used to say to me, yes, mum, don't worry. I got the message. You don't have to worry. I know what I should do. Because I used to say, well, I have to deliver you from birth and death. She says, yes, 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 I know. I know what I'm supposed to do. But I didn't do it. But she says, you know, I know what I should do. I know I have to chant like this. So if we can, we can, uh, we may not be pure, but we can at least facilitate that person's spiritual life. We can encourage them, isn't it? You know, we can make sure that they chant their rounds or we give them opportunity to read. You know, have spiritual programs at home, do preaching, just all, all the things that Prabhupada would want us to do. And then we're doing our best to deliver that person. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> That's all we can do, isn't it, in our situation? Because yeah. But that's not realistic either, is it? We probably would need to be married. <laughs> so that we could, you know, we probably would go, ooh, you know, after, after 20 years of chanting 64 rounds a day, we, you know, maybe we would be liberated, or maybe we would just be mental cases. Because you can't, there's another point is that you can't jump to a high platform. You can't just jump to being liberated platform. I mean, it's possible, but most people go gradually. That means going through the Grihastha Ashram. Being you know, they say more honest path, but but at least if you can, you know, if you have a dependent, if you take dependence, you at least direct them to Prabhupada. That's my understanding. That's what you do. Yeah. Like Lochan, his wife, they're bringing the baby to the temple, and you know, doing their grihastha duties like that. So what, you had a you had a question as well, comment. Correction. No, I mean, just because you, you were explaining how uh, Badi Maharaj was in the complicated situation because yeah. he had to reject the, the guru or start his guru and reject Krishna. And I was just thinking it also was even more tension because he, he got the whole universe because he had Guru Bhakti. Yeah. He was so many orders to fill. Yeah. So, Yeah, because he was he surrendered to Sukracharya, and that was honoured, you know, because the guru is uh, empowered uh, to fulfil. <coughs> he was a materialistic guru, so he fulfilled his materialistic ambitions. But the higher principle, isn't it, is, is to surrender to spiritual. Uh, 
for spiritual reasons to surrender if if there's a, a clash between the spiritual duties and material duties you should do the spiritual duty isn't it my devotee would yeah it's called um a dharma dharma sankat if, if you have a a situation where if you do this you'll break dharma and if you do that you'll break dharma so which which do you do you know? do i do what my husband says or do i do what my guru says you know or do i you know <coughs> both so you have to choose the one that's higher but you may need advice from more experienced or quite you know more mature people but and sometimes we can make those kind of decisions and we think we're making it on the basis of spiritual life but actually we just you know can use spiritual logic or use spiritual life to make a decision that's actually materially motivated and uh, it's, anyway it can be complicated knowing actually why we do things But you wanted to say something, Guru? Yeah. Um, if our parents are not devotees, but we become devotees, um, should we try to liberate them? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what... In the, in the pastime of Prahlad, um, it, it's explained in one of the purports that if you, if you become a pure devotee, it, all your family get liberated, I think. If you actually become a really a pure devotee, there's 21 generations, 21 generations, so forward and back, become liberated. And if you just become a devotee, I think like three, three generations forward and back, like in the future, in the past, become liberated. So not to worry too much about your family, because if you become a devotee, they, they get benefited. And somebody asked Prabhupada, well, what, what benefit do they get? He said, they become devotees. They will become devotees. Maybe not right now. <coughs> Maybe in another life, but they will get that. Krishna takes care of your family. But it doesn't mean that we start neglecting our family, you know, either. Or being artificially renounced from our family. We can keep in touch with them and we can, you know, give them books and prasadam and maybe you know, a little instruction if they're open to it or just to be cordial with them if they're not open to the hearing about Krishna we can just be you know still friendly send them a Christmas card or something you know this, I don't know but internally we have to know what the priority is that's the thing isn't it we that's my experience of life. A lot of things will go on, even sometimes in ISKCON, things, so many things will go on. But we have to be internally fixed on what we're doing. We have to be internally strong and fixed. And that means you have to really understand the philosophy, you have to really understand you know, what Prabhupada wanted. And be determined. You know, patience, determination and enthusiasm. These three things are important. Okay. Shima Bhagavatam ki Hare Krishna